Hello, Dan Matichek here, and uh, I wanted to show you uh, what happened. <laughs> um, it's a long story, but basically I messed up one of my glazes, and I was trying to save a batch of pots, and I knew that I had to actually fire them at a little bit higher temperature. Um, but what I found was the reason the batch got messed up wasn't because I actually messed up the glaze, although I did add white slip accidentally to my white glaze, a small percentage. That was a little bit of the problem. But when the kiln went off, I thought, boy, it, that was a little bit faster than last time. I hadn't, wasn't sure at the time, but it seemed faster. So I get home, and I'm looking at my, my cones, and I pull out my cones, and I'm looking at them, and there are a lot of broken ones in the box, so I pull them out, and I'm taking them, and I'm, I'm pull, you know, putting pressure on them. I don't know if these will do it. These are the pieces. And about half of them had a weak point in the middle and just snapped right in half, like there was a fault going down when they, when they made these for some reason. And the other half are fine. I put the same amount of pressure on their heart as a rock, but about half of them just snapped in half. So I had, so I'm just using these for like witness cones, just, you know, to use them up, and I'm going to go and get some new cones. But in the meantime, I, I realized that I had to fire those at a little higher temperature because I wanted the small amount of slip that was in my clear glaze to, um, basically to melt in so that I could at least salvage them. They're just pieces from my garden mostly. So here's what happened. I fired them up at cone two. And this is the, uh, put had three kinds of clay in there. And this is 50-50 uh, fond clay and um, the, the uh, uh, low fire uh, clay with grog that I mixed. And it came out, they came out beautiful. That, that's no glaze. That's the actual uh, color inside. It's like a light uh, reddish not quite terracotta, but with the glaze, they came out just really beautiful, just really nice, almost like marbling, because I had a little bit of red slip on my hands when I threw them, and um, a nice red, very, very nice. The glaze even came out good, although it's a little foggy, as you would expect, because it has the uh, slip in it. So I ended up actually throwing that away, just I, I didn't want to keep using it. And then I did a couple of the larger pots that I'm going to use for my upside, upside on zucchini. And they're the white clay with grog. And they came out very nice as well. And this is actually the same clay with a little bit of red slip. And even though I refired them, uh, the glaze was a little thick. It blistered a little bit here and there. But they're usable for my, for my garden. This was kind of a shame because even though it was an experiment, it was kind of neat. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's nice for, for a vase, um, but obviously for a pitcher you can't use it now because it's blistered up a little bit on the inside, firing it twice and then firing it at a higher temperature the second time. Um, but it's still kind of an interesting interesting piece. Uh, I like it. And um, I also pulled this little pot out. came out pretty nice. It has some small blisters on it, but, again, for my garden it's, it's fine. Uh, I do like that grog in there, the look of that. And then I did this piece, and if I pulled it out, and I was like, wow, that looks really nice. And uh, I didn't really get a look at it. It was way in the bottom. And I uh, fired it at a cone, too, which is the highest I, I fired this stuff, other than my sample, which actually, I'll show you that, in my test kiln, came out really dark. It was actually probably over a cone, too. So definitely cone two is the upper limit of this clay, of the 100% fond clay. Then let me show you this. Look at this on nice. Whoa, massive crack. <laughs> massive crack. Crack across the bottom. And nice glaze, though. Beautiful, shiny glaze, but look at that crack. You could stick, a, stick your finger through that one. <laughs> So that was kind of a shame, but uh, I knew the limits of the clay, and I uh, found the problem with the cones, and I could have gone on for a long time trying to find that problem, so 
it just luckily I, I I noticed the broken cones and noticed that half of them were pre-cracked. <laughs> but uh, hey, you live and learn, and uh, problem solved. So uh, I'm glad that didn't happen when I put some of my newer pieces in. That would have been uh, that would have been bad. <laughs> That's it for now. Take it easy.